Hey folks, so this video is answering quite a few questions about the torque that a servo needs to move that flying surface in a calculator I created with an Excel spreadsheet. So um, somewhere in this you'll see my Gmail um, uh, email address and I'll give you the uh, calculator for free. But it's not something I invented. I took the math. There's a document called the 520-A, which is part of the AMA large model aircraft um, uh, part where if you're going to be over 55 pounds, <clears throat> you need to get your plane basically inspected or, or a waiver for it, or you just have to be part of that program to fly a plane over 55 pounds. Well, in that documentation is the math and the formulas to understand how big the surface of your airplane is and how much torque it takes to move it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in this video, but I'm gonna talk a lot more about how to use this calculator I created. Um, so let's jump into this. So when we think about the flying surfaces on our airplanes, we know if you go on a dive, there's a lot more forces being put on your elevator. Um, or even your ailerons, okay? Your flying surfaces have to be big enough to fly the plane, but we have to have big enough servos to move those flying surfaces, especially if you build the big airplanes like I do. If you don't know me or follow me or you're brand new to my channel, um, I'm obsessed with giant scale airplanes. Um, I love to design them from scratch, um, make them up in my head or I'll go out and find an aircraft that I like and I'll do my own CAD drawings and 3Ds and all that junk, build the airplane test flight and then go flying and have fun. But with giant scale airplanes take some giant scale responsibilities. But I also think there's a good argument that even the smaller planes that go 80 or 90 mile an hour can kill you just as quick as a giant airplane. Okay. So what I, what I really want to stress to people is I want you to use your creative juices and build your contraptions and build your airplanes. Just make sure you got big enough servos that the plane will fly. So this is my MSL-2. It is part of a large um, model uh, aircraft, part of the AMA, because it is over 55 pounds. This plane's 61 pounds. And it has some really big ass servos in it, okay? But really what's more important is the fact that baby Olive, who's my pilot, she prays and begs me to make sure that I build this airplane right. Now, if you don't know the story about baby Olive, she is a robotic baby where her head moves. Uh, people actually thought for a while that I had stuck an infant in a plane and took it flying. And no, I don't, I've never done that. It would be stupid to take a living human being and stick in an airplane. Um, it'd just be crazy. So what I want to talk about for a minute is just some basics. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about how this calculator works. Okay. So if you look at this illustration here, you'll see you got on the left, you have a servo arm, you see every linkage, and then you see you have a flying surface and there's a pivot point, which is your hinge. And then there's a point where the control arm pivots with the linkage. Okay. And to make this a little bit more clear as mud, these four points are what's important to understand what they are when you're using my little calculator, okay? Before we get too deep into this, I want to talk about a fantastic supporter of mine. It's RTL Fasteners. Um, go to their website. they got every bolt, nut, washer, everything you need for the hobby, uh, servo screws, you name it. If you use uh, code DA30 and you buy more than $50 worth of product, you get 30% off. It's a really cool deal. So now I want to talk about the definition of the size of your flying surface. So here's an illustration of an aileron. It could be an elevator, but we're calling it an aileron. I'm not sure why. This, this, this diagram is taken from the AMA literature. I'm not sure why they show the aileron bigger than the wing, okay? Uh, I mean the trailing edge. It sticks out more than the trailing edge of the wing. But what you need to know when you use the, uh, the do the math is the span is the length of the control surface. Okay, it could be an elevator, could be a rudder, could be an aileron. Whatever that length is, is the span. Okay, the root cord 
is what's closest to the fuselage, and the tip cord is what's closest to the tip of the wing. Okay, when you think of your servo arm distance, it's going to be from the pivot of the servo arm to the hole in it that connects your linkage. And on your control system, the control arm length is going to be from the hinge to the control arm um, uh, hole where your linkage grabs it. So on the right is the little calculator I created. You see it says span, root cord, tip co cord, servo arm, control arm. There's a thing called air factor we'll talk about in a minute. And then it will tell you what the torque needs to be on that said airplane. So what I'm going to do here for a minute is open up the um, calculator so you can see it here. And if you notice, like anything in blue here is what you change. These are numbers you will input yourself. So let's just say the span of this elevator. I'm going to change this real quick. The span of this elevator is 10. The root cord is 3. The tip cord is 2. Uh, the servo arm is 1.5 inches, and we'll leave the control arm on the elevator the same. Now, keep in mind, when you change the difference of the links, you're going to have difference in travel. So you got to make sure you got enough travel to do the type of flying you want. If it's a go-fast plane, you might only want 20 degrees up and down. If it's a 3D plane, you might go 45 degrees. But if you notice the torque on this thing down here, uh, went to 187. Now, if we go back to where we were when I started, 36 is what's standard for this for this Avante. This is the elevator on my Avante. But you notice how that changed. If you go to the next column to the right, this is my MSL2 elevator. Okay, it needs 405 ounces to move that big elevator. This span is 31 inches. The tip cord is seven point, I mean the root cord is 7.4. The tip cord is 3.8. Now keep in mind I fudged that a little bit because the elevator is elliptical. So I had to do a little bit of messing around to make sure that I had the square, well, the, yeah, I, I figured out how to make sure the square inches in the length was correct. Um, the servo arm is two inches. Now the control arm is longer, which means I'm getting a little bit better uh, mechanical advantage. Because um, remember, if your control arm I'm sorry, if your servo arm is really long and your control arm is really short, it's going to take a ton of torque to move that. <clears throat> if your servo arm is really short and your control arm is really long, you get a lot more mechanical advantage, but you get less throw. Okay, and I've done another video on that exact same thing on flying surfaces and their throw, so you can go watch that video. Um, on my aileron, which is a big ass aileron, 32 inches long, it needed 422 ounces of torque. But this is scalable. I want everybody to know this scales down pretty good, okay? So let's go back to here for a minute. And now what we're going to talk about a little bit is the air factor. The air factor is how fast your airplane is going to go through the air. So if you notice over here on the right, on the, on the left-hand table, on the right-hand side of it, there's a 1.25, there's a 1.5, a 3.0, 1.75, a 4.0, a 3.0, and a 6.0. Any one of these should fit within the flight envelope of your airplane. Even though this was designed for giant scale airplanes, it's been very scalable for like on my Avante and my other airplanes. And, it, and it's worked really, really well. So um, when we think about our flying surfaces, our tails back there, if it's a park flyer, Chances are you're going to buy a servo that's going to have plenty of torque to fly it. But if you're getting into something that you scratch built and you just really don't know what size servo to put in it, this calculator works pretty good. Now look, I'm not going to say it's perfect. You need to test fly your plane and be gentle at first because I got all of this from the AMA document and I've kind of scaled it down to smaller airplane. Now I haven't changed any of the math, but what I mean by scaling down is I've taken what it says the uh, torque should be for like the elevator on my Avante. And then I look at the servo that came with the Avante and it's about 25% bigger. Look at the ailerons on the Avante, looked at what the calculator told me it should be and looked at what was installed in it. And those on the airplane that came with it were about 25% stronger. So I think some people just want to put a bigger servo on there and, 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 and stick it in there. But play around with this calculator if you want and understand what it really means and, and how it works. 
um, because I I super like it. Um, but keep in mind, though, if you are building giant scale airplanes, okay, if you're building something like this, <clears throat> you've got to make sure it's right because to get your waiver for the AMA, you have to prove to them that you've done the math, okay, that you've gone through and you know how it's going to work. Um, because in the, at the end of the day, we want to fly model aircraft that are safe. We don't want to come out of a screaming dive because I've had it happen to me once with a plane where I almost crashed it. And it wasn't mine. I was test flying it. And what happened was the push rods flexed on the elevator. So when I was pulling, pulling out of the, uh, if you think about the elevator, it's pushing on the elevator horn to give you up elevator. It was a P-40, I think. And I was coming out of a screaming dive. And as I pulled back on the elevator, I hardly had any elevator. I almost hit the ground. And what happened was the push rod flexed. So it had plenty of torque, but the linkage was garbage. So, you know, but just make sure that you understand that this calculator is just a good starting base. Okay, I'm not saying it's 100% right because I didn't create the math for it. I just put it into an Excel spreadsheet to make it super slick and easy, okay? And plus, if you're going to be taking Baby Olive for flights, she is wanting me to make sure I got the math right so I don't stick her ass into a cornfield, okay? So that's it on this video, everybody. I just wanted to kind of tell you how I use this little calculator. If you got any questions, reach out to me. I will make sure that there is um, my Gmail in this video so you can email me and I can send you the little calculator. And have an awesome day. Rock on. And as you always know, take a kid flying. Get kids involved in model aviation. They're our future. If they love drones, welcome them. If they love FPV, welcome them. If they love contraptions <clears throat> that look like they shouldn't fly, welcome them on board. I mean, you know, we all got to build crazy things. I know I'm 59, but I've got the mentality of a 12-year-old when it comes to doing stupid stuff with, with uh, uh, I don't want to say stupid, crazy stuff. I think there's a difference between doing, being crazy and being stupid. So rock on, everybody. Have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you next time. Be safe.